welcome everyone so today uh, this occasion uh, as you know this is a part, part of covid funding and the crowd funding project with sofia nihon kairli and ekalavya we are glad to work with all these parties and uh, we we know how this sofia was uh, coordinating with the students collecting money uh, uh, checking the npos and finally they decided to uh, dedicate uh, the, donate the fund to ekalavya who is doing the ground level works in india uh, for many educational related uh, uh, social supports to the communities over there not just in maharashtra but i believe in chatisgarh orissa and all so their uh, founder uh, and co-founder prashant and uh, raju kedre bo both will be attending this session and so uh, welcome all to this session and also to the uh, delegates uh, like uh, mishal ajit dr devisha father john and our my teammate uh, and the nikon kali teammate like uh, babusan sri kusan and everyone ev everyone who is uh, and dr bawa everyone who is present today thank you all for coming so let's start uh, our this is this is the first time nikon kali organizing a symposium as such and we are happy that uh, the course of the symposium is also very good a good initiative both for the community in japan and community in india so welcome all to the first nihon kerli symposium uh, based based on the uh, the international collaboration for community support in india so this is the theme of this symposium so the first first i would li like to ask ekalavya to talk about what all activities they are doing and the details about ekalavya and from ekalavya te team uh, raju kendre and uh, prashant chavan so i will give a brief introduction i mean they are, they are quite doing a lot in the ground level uh, they are actually tata institute of social science uh, alumni and raju kendre he is the founder of ekalavya and he is currently after getting scholarship he has moved to uk sos source university and uh, do, doing his studies there uh, along with the egalavia activities and prashant he is the co-founder and he he was the main coordinator for this project and we i would like to invite both of them uh, to talk about egalavia to to our guests and uh, the community in japan and the students over here please ekalavya handing over to you thanks thanks ajay yeah uh, i joined from yavatmal which is a small town in uh, maharashtra india okay so uh, raju raju may be joining soon yeah uh, so i will be taking it forward from uh, uh, from from us so this is prashant chavan i am uh, ekalavya and uh, thanks ajay for coordinating this and uh, i really glad to meet you all in this gathering uh, so uh, let me just brief you about eklave so uh, like a brief uh, line we can say we just uh, want to uh, bring equal access to higher education quality higher education and opportunities among the marginalized communities or the marginalized youth in his connectivity is not so good yeah can you hear me now yeah we can hear you yeah so we uh, along with the access to education and opportunity we are also working to nurture the grassroots leadership among these groups uh, we are working since 2017 raju and i uh, like me are the alumni of tata institute of social science and we started this initiative uh, in 2017 and since then we are like working to um, uh, mentor uh, these grassroots students grassroots learners for the for the top universities and we are uh, like training them mentoring them and guiding them to get into such quality higher education spaces so uh, till now like more than 300 student from our uh, our intervention got into such premier spaces of higher education uh, which includes national universities and also some prestigious fellowships in social sector 
uh, we are now in fourth year and uh, like the covid year was really challenging for us uh, like many of our many of our student got disconnected with the learning uh, like uh, like uh, as they don't have learning infrastructure and devices also so uh, there there are different university exam or like uh, like required uh, to write online entrance exam so due to uh, like lack of such devices and environment like uh, it was really like negatively impacted on our student and uh, many of them couldn't uh, like attended the exams entrance exams also so we like uh, we closely experienced such problem while working with with the students uh, from marginalized community uh, like student are coming like geog- they are located in very remote uh, geographical locations uh, in our region so most of them belong to tribal communities and uh, uh, other like dalit uh communities also so uh, th- that's the experience and uh, during covid we also extended our help to respond uh, this uh, situation we also worked with many voluntarily organizations voluntary organization to uh, extend voluntary support and we also uh, like uh, mobilize some funds to help migrant people who who who, who uh, like cover uh, uh stranded in the in the cities in the mumbai pune and uh, and all so we we extended that work during the first wave of covid and uh, uh, meanwhile we uh, uh, like I, when ajay contacted me uh, i shared about about uh, the, the the impact on our student due to the covid so it was like a large impact and we we are intending or like with the funds we have we had received from this initiative we are intending to to set up the a digital resource center where student can facilitate their learning so they can continue with the learning they, like if the student uh, like right from uh, like right from uh, filling their application for universities uh, and then uh, sitting their entrance exam uh, like figuring out online resources so we are setting up a online like digital resource center in yavatmal uh, where we can facilitate the learning uh, to the student so that's it from our side thank you so much if you have any question please feel free to ask thank you yeah yeah Th- thank you thank you prashant for the the details about ekalavya so uh, i would like to just ask you about like i know you you have did uh, so, some extension during covid also to the rural communities and all so can you just share what, what you exactly did during uh, the for the community support apart from the education uh, you you were supplying rations etc to the tribal villages and all am i correct yes 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 yeah, yeah. so uh, like uh, like uh, as you said education is our core area but uh, but d- during the first wave of covid uh, we responded this emergency situation and we utilize our volunteer network we do have volunteer network across our state in maharashtra so you we utilize that network uh, and we raise some fund and uh, we we uh, uh, we like we we created some ration kits uh, like food kits uh, like for a month or for a month or two and we circulated among those communities like most of these communities are daily wage laborers uh, migrants who who are who were stranded in the cities so uh, with the help of our volunteer network we we uh, like we circulated this uh, this help To, to these affected communities uh, so we work in maharashtra only uh, most of the laborers who uh, there are nomadic tribe communities also like i especially want to mention here that they used to uh, like uh, uh, migrate for their livelihood like different in different uh, location uh, across the india uh, but they the the, um, uh, the nomadic tribes are largely uh, affected of this covid situation and uh we could like uh, identify those communities with our like ground network and many of the organization all were already working with nomadic tribe groups and we were associated with them earlier so we could uh, extend our help uh, uh, to the, uh, with this okay. so uh, with the help of different organization uh, we uh, we mobilized more than 8 lakh uh, for uh, through the crowd funding 
and we uh, circulated uh, like uh, uh, in 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 the in the ration form ration form uh, okay. to the needy person thank you thank okay, you thanks. prasan so thank you for giving the insights about this uh, ngo ekalavya and your activities and uh, this collaboration also i i believe uh, you were the i mean uh, the student side every everyone buddy were very eagerly looking for you are uh, knowing your activities what exactly you are doing and in the later sessions uh, you can hear uh, any questions from uh, everyone so i will leave the q and a to the last last part of the symposium and so let's move on to mishal so as we said uh, the migrant communities including including ourselves being an indian migrant community in japan so the impact of covid uh, have uh, we have a larger impact in a, any of the migrant communities because we are not at home and even if, if you are in japan you are your parents will be in uh, india or as prashant said in india itself there are migrants from different states uh, stranded over here and there so let me invite uh, michal who is a you united nation university student and a specialist on migrants to to give an insight about the impact of covid uh, for especially on the focus of migrants hi uh, am i audible yeah you are audible yeah hi thank you yeah. uh, thank you for the introduction yeah. so um my name is michal and i am working with uh, united nations university germany on a project called protecting well being of migrants um and we are focusing on migrants in india um so during the covid time uh, we were working on this initiative called let's reach out kerala dr devisha shashidevan who will be speaking later she uh, was the co-founder and um, myself and ajit were working as co uh, were co team members of lrok so during that time we were able to uh, reach out to almost 14000 um migrant workers who were stranded in kerala and um that was what you know inspired me to apply for this job so here like uh, in the in my the project that i am working with we have identified four categories of migrant workers basically those uh, those who are like in kerala who have uh, the international migrants who have come to kerala there are people from bangladesh nepal sri lanka who have come to kerala and there are people within india who have come um, so there's international in migrants and internal in migrants and similarly we can find international out migrants who have like gone to uh, gone outside india like um, all of you like um, and there are people who have gone uh, to states within india it's also internal out migration and international out migration so we are basically focusing into uh the problems that this is due to covid and trying to find policy suggestions um like one of the major thing like while, while prashant bhaiya was also talking we could see how the people who were already vulnerable have been pushed even to more vulnerable situation like their lives have been pushed from a vulnerable situation to a precarious situation where uh, we can see like all uh, most of the times migration happens due to distress like um, a pull factors or uh, push factors in the place that they are living and uh, the my uh, the covid like sudden impact as covid was uh, like as lockdown was implemented in like even when we say covid the most of the impact happened due to lockdown the sudden lockdown that was um, put in india like we already had a four hours gap uh, to prepare for the lockdown so that has created a lot of um, like uh, negative impacts Uh, one i like i said how people were pushed from being vulnerable to being precarious and there are other things like uh, the upward social mobility so through migration any person aspires for an upward social mi- uh, mobility like from where they are to where they aspire to be so covid has the lockdown and the impact of covid has uh, caused a strain on that that like people are unable to uh, move upwards like they due to like you know lack of jobs or losing their jobs or travel restrictions and even finding places to uh, uh, stay and um, so and even like you know basic money to start their um, migration so due to these factors we can see how uh, the upward mobility has also been affected 
and another area that we need to focus is well being so well being uh, has not been come into the development discourse in india yet but it is of course uh, the co- the whole impact of covid has started the discourse on well being where you know the mental and physical emotional intellectual health of a person has to be uh, taken care of and um, while working with the migrants right now there were many things that i could identify one was the education like how like prashant bhaiya said how the education of these uh, children of migrants were affected uh, especially like in like all of the schools went online and these are people who may have uh, may not even have a, a, a proper you know phone with internet connection so uh, many were unable to join um, classes and education is a way for them to go upward like you know get better in life so that path that they had hope on has been affected and another was a strain on savings many migrants used to save a lot but due to the covid and you know uh, and how because of the three months of lockdown in india a lot of them had to depend on the savings that they had which they had planned for other uses so a strain on uh, savings can be seen and also we can see how the fear has been generated like fear about covid and fear about you know how their life will be so this whole mental um, health has been affected and um, another important thing like i would like to point out is how to a positive to not a positive side but something to be happy about is how we could see a number of voluntary initiatives coming forward to help like we as lrok were able to help and eklavya of course did a great job so uh, throughout my work i was able to identify various like individuals and organizations that have come up to help and their role is very crucial in um, uh, like you know bridging this gap because a lot of times where even where government interventions were not that effective uh the you know, in voluntary initiatives could go ahead so um i really congratulate and i'm yeah. very a part of this uh, initiative and um, thank yeah. you for calling can you can you just give a brief insight about international migrant community who returned to kerala yeah, yeah. who are forced to return uh, i mean you could find a lot of such people or uh, any any yeah thank you for pointing that out i had actually missed that so we uh, the thing is because we are doing it as a project and we need to interview them a lot of people are hesitant to talk because for them like i said the upward mobility has been affected so uh, we were able to talk to a few of them in ernakulam and uh, malappuram districts in kerala the common thing we could find out was that how they were doing you know they had jobs there and they had to return back either um, due to lo- losing their job or due to their uh, salary cut um, and now they are unable to go back so they are forced to take up a job here so the jobs they are forced to take up jobs that they had left uh, like they did not want to do these jobs that's why they went abroad but on returning they have to take up this job so we could find this um, this uh, clash this uh, mental um, stress on returning to a job that they did not want to do in the first place but that is the only resort that that they have right now and similarly like um, how the savings has been uh, drained and um, things like that. yeah uh, thank you very much michelle uh, for talking such elaborate insights on migrant communities uh, inside india and international migrants so now uh, let me just uh, let me call up uh, uh, babu tanishri uh, he is the president and board of uh, president of board of directors of nihon kairali uh, to give uh, an uh, idea about what all things a community outside india could support uh, to to both local communities uh, in in staying in japan and also uh, the people back in india so uh, well babusan over to you thanks ajay can you hear me yeah i can hear you yeah okay thank you thank you so much uh, first of all um thanks to you know i should thank uh, you know sofia students and you know the meguko community um for the noble thought you know they uh, they had you know during uh, you know peak times of covid in india 
and you know to become a helping hand uh, you know to to the india community and the, and that's a reason you know why uh, we have uh, we have come to this stage and you know having um, having this session so thanks a ton to them you know for that uh, noble thought and uh, you know it's it's great to uh, listen to prashant you know talking about um, their activities and you know it's uh, it's great that you know uh, they are focusing on uh, the education as the core theme uh, to support uh, the students uh, where you know wherever uh, there are struggles are there and um, you know we, we we have a strong belief that you know uh, education is the way to go forward and you know when when your core uh, of your focus is at education you know you know that will drive progress uh, within the community that you are progressing and all the more happy to hear that you know the the fund that is uh, going into uh, ekalavya is going to be used for uh, digital initiatives where in which you know students can potentially uh, you know uh, continue to do what they were doing or you know all the struggles uh, they are having in terms of access and uh, things like that uh, so wonderful uh, to hear that uh, michelle uh, you know it's great to um, see that you know research uh, in these areas is uh, uh, you know happening and you know the wonderful insi insights you know that are coming out of uh, those uh, uh, research activities and uh, people who are sitting uh, so far you know you know don't have clear idea on you know what uh, what you know different uh, communities or you know different group of people are going through uh, because of covid and uh, uh, these research insights and you know sharing it with a community like us you know it helps us to shape our thoughts also on how we can you know potentially uh, make initiatives and you know potentially support uh, those things uh, so thank you uh, thank you for that i know um, uh, i represent uh, nihon karli um, i am president of you know the board of directors um, I just want to uh, share a brief about uh, Nihon Karli, uh, especially to the people who are uh, first time, you know, uh, we are interacting. Uh, the presentation is visible, right, Ajay? It's visible, yeah. Okay. So Nihon Karli, uh, you know, uh, it's a community, um, uh, community uh, non-profit organization uh, it's it's primarily from uh, the southern uh, india uh, a state called kerala uh, the members are uh, from you know the kerala state who speaks malayalam as a language and uh, it is operational in japan for the last 35 years uh, you know we had very few people at that time you know we have grown into uh, close to around you know 1500 people currently uh, it's pan japan you know but major majority of the people are um, located in uh, tokyo or you know the the kanto region and uh, osaka and nagoya so uh, we have presence across japan and what we do uh, you know primarily around uh, three uh, three sections one is around uh, preserving uh, kerala culture it in, it includes a lot of things i don't want to get into the details of that you know in terms of celebrating or in terms of making our next generation aware of you know uh, the culture of uh, kerala and uh, india and uh, we also you know are focusing on youth development uh, what it means is uh, more about you know um, helping the community especially the young people uh, towards their careers or you know towards their studies those activities also are there and uh, the topic uh, which is of relevant uh, today is about uh, you know, charity or uh, community support um, we have been, how, how we have been doing that, um, we don't have a permanent structure in which, you know, we look at uh, um, charity, but, uh, you know, we have always been looking at, you know, uh, in, a, in a dynamic way on how to do that support. So, whenever uh, there is an event that is happening um, related with us, you know, whether it is in Japan, you know, whether uh, it goes through a lot of, you know, natural uh, disasters here in Japan or you know um, the community outside Japan especially in you know, India and Kerala uh, we initiate uh, dynamic groups and we initiate um, you know collections or you know fund collections 
uh, from organizations, from individuals, from within the community. And that's how we operate. And, uh, you know, till now uh, we have made um, uh, contributions in, in different mode, you know, whether it is monetary or uh, medical uh, kind of support. Uh, we have enabled, uh, you know, especially during COVID, uh, uh, many, um, you know, kids uh, in, in having access to uh, the necessary infrastructure in terms of electronics and things like that. Uh, overall, you know, we have contributed to close to around 80 um, lakhs yen, you know, close to around 55 uh, lakhs Indian rupees um, in, in different modes. Uh, some of our major initiatives has been, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, we do in small scale, but, you know, some of the major initiatives uh, mentioned here um, during 2018, you know, in which Kerala has, um, you know, gone through one of the um, you know, very difficult situation in terms of uh, severe flood, um, the, especially, you know, the community here and also the extended community of, you know, uh, Japanese people from, uh, from, you know, many, many locations or, you know, many organizations, you know, have come forward to support us and we have made a major, you know, fund collection and um, this is uh, donated as a monetary fund to um, the chief minister's uh, uh, fund collection. Uh, so that, that's one of the main thing, you know, if I want to highlight that, what we have done. And, um, you know, the last two, two years, you know, along with the entire world, it has been really challenging times for uh, us also here. You know, COVID came second to uh, Japan, you know, after China, it was um, Italy and Japan, you know. So we didn't have, you know, uh, uh, we didn't have any information, you know, the entire community was, you know, getting into a state of, a little bit of panic and so so we we did a lot of things you know to make uh, community support uh, during that time and especially during i will touch upon in the next section specifically about the covid uh, on on what nihon Carly did so uh, so during the initial stages uh, you know the covid came in it was in 2020 Jan january you know february time frame Nobody was having any information. You know, Japan is a country in which, uh, you know, a lot of things are in Japanese and uh, there are a lot of community members, you know, who, do, who doesn't have, you know, access to information in an appropriate uh, way. So, you know, we formed a, you know, a COVID volunteer team. There were around uh, 10 members in that. Uh, and, you know, the one of the main thing that we focused uh, at that time was to, make sure that, you know, everybody in the community uh, gets, you know, a reliable uh, source of information. So we followed media, we followed, we talked with government agencies, we followed multiple sources, you know, in making sure that, you know, communities having, um, you know, access to uh, information in, in an appropriate way and also in a, you know, uh, in a speedy manner. So, you know, there were a number of bulletins shared, you know, uh, whoever, uh, wanted support, you know, there was a COVID help uh, created. So in, in that way, a priority was to share information, you know, help the community uh, who, who need support, you know, who is hospitalized. So, so those kind of things, uh, you know, we are focused in the initial stages. And once uh, vaccines, uh, you know, uh, started rolling out, uh, there's a lot of information sharing uh, within the community to to make sure that you know everybody gets that information how to do it you know where to do it because you know there's a lot of information which was uh, scattered uh, so those were you know some of the things that we uh, focused in the initial stages uh, and um, you know travel during uh, pandemic um, was a you know uh, was an area in which a lot of people were uh, facing problems because uh, you know, things were changing dynamically, you know, Japan will introduce a new, um, new policy or India side will introduce a new policy. So um, we have formed, you know, very active dynamic groups and that groups are, you know, still, still very active, you know, especially when um, travel is reopening now. Um, you know, we feel that close to around 2000 people uh, got engaged in that group and we still have, you know, a lot of activities going on in that groups which is basically, you know, helping people, uh, whoever needs to travel urgently for a lot of reasons, right? And helping them in, in making sure that, you know, they have uh, the necessary information they have. Uh, so those, those kind of things uh, was more from uh, information sharing, uh, enabling people to travel. And uh, when second uh, wave, you know, um, 
hit India, and it all happened in you know in no time. You know, within two three weeks, uh, everything was going in a in a in a wrong way. And you know, uh, the support especially needed on oxygen. You know, or the uh, devices related with oxygen. You know, all the news was coming in, and then we uh, quickly formed. Uh, you know, uh, again a volunteer group, and uh, you know they have all come together. We reached out to the community again. And quickly collected around, you know, um, ten lakhs yen, and um, you know because uh, uh, the devices like oxygen meters, you know, they were uh, very shortage in in terms of uh, even procurement. So we reached out uh, multiple places, you know, Japan, China, and finally we you know we could source it from uh, UK, and uh, you know we have we have uh, collaborated with uh, embassy and you know India government to. um make it available you know within a week's time uh, to india so that's that's another thing you know which has happened um in a in a very quick uh, fashion uh, to in terms of uh, you know supporting the community during the second um second wave of covid um and you know finally um you know during that time you know the sofia team and uh, our dear father Uh, they came up uh, with the intent to help uh, the community in india and uh, you know with uh, with the team from nihon garli you know we have collaborated and uh, we have reached uh, the current stage and we really you know look forward to how to collaborate further and enabling um, you know whatever collaboration uh, meguko need uh, in terms of uh, reaching ekalavya and you know further activities that uh you would want to engage with them so thanks uh, to all the uh, delegates and you know uh, for whatever uh, you know the areas which you are uh, functioning and all the best in doing that and uh, thanks to um thanks to you know meguko once again in in initiating this thanks uh, thanks everyone Yeah, uh, thank you, Babusan, for giving a good good insight about a, a migrant community, international migrant community, and activities that is Nihon Kairali. Uh, so I I think uh, th- this will give an idea for all delegates and all students in Japan also how a, co- a local community is uh, uh, functioning. What is the importance of such communities? So uh, thank you, Babusan. So let let me move to the next topic. Uh, it's from uh, uh, dr john joseph uh, father will talk about uh, education uh, between india and japan the alliance and how what all activities are doing between india and japan regarding the same so i invite uh, father dr uh, john put, uh, put, Jos- john joseph okay. <laughs> yeah thank you uh, okay i am father john joseph and uh, i am here since 1986 just the uh neon guy really we, we did not have it he slowly took shape and uh, so once again uh thank you to the members of the uh, galavia and neon guy really for organizing this event and uh, oh i am teaching in the university Sofia University and the students are from Sofia. Uh, so in in Sofia University we have more than I think close to fourteen thousand students. So there are many student groups, and uh, one such group is a uh, Meguko is a student, you know NGO. So if, you know a professor started this in nineteen seventy five. so they were visiting europe and on their return they landed in bombay at that time and uh, they met with street children and uh, so when they came back to japan they said it is not enough just to see them we should do something and so they began this organization in 1975 and uh, you know first started supporting children in uh, you know in bombay one of the institutions run by the jesuits there and then it extended during the following years so when i joined sofia in 90, 98 
uh, you know, he was the professor who was forming this one was retiring. And so he asked me to take it up. And so I became the advisor to the Meguko. And so we expanded it to both India and to Philippines. So we have thousand children in India and thousand children in the Philippines. So our policy is only uh, to give support to you know, school education, that we take one child in the first grade and we support that child until he or she graduates in the 12th grade. So it's a commitment for 12 years. So we don't have much fund, but whatever we have, we try to share and, uh, but it's a commitment. So we will make sure that all our children who join Meguko will be, you know, so we will support with our own policies rules for 12 years. And so from 75 onwards, it has been happening. So, so that is how, so I take um, students here in the campus, you know, they do not know what we are doing in the field. So I take them every summer for about three weeks. So we go to mainly our support was in, uh, in now in limited to Gujarat in the tribal belt. So we go and stay there for about three weeks in various villages, various schools. So the student get an experience. They meet the children there whom they support. So they collect, raise funds here. And so we continually support them. And so, so similarly, I take them to the Philippines. Again, we try to stay in rural village or slum areas. And we have good partners in all the places. And so the, through the partnership, it can be done better. So we have a very regular program. And uh, so with our limited resources, we try to limit to these 2000 children at this moment. Um, so that is how, you know, I, these students also who came with me to India, some of them, and uh, they have seen India. And so when this happened, they came and asked me, what, what shall we do? And they, they wanted to do something for India. And uh, so I suggested, you know, the Nihon Kairali initiative to them. That's all my, my role. The rest is all by the students and all credit to the students. And they do everything. I only stand behind. I do not have much time. So I make sure they decide everything, where to help, whom to help, how much, everything is done by the students. So I only stand behind since we get a lot of funding. And so we need to be, you know, responsible for our activities. So I make sure that everything go well and I stand behind. So whatever decision the student make, they are all now graduates of Meguko. And uh, so I'm glad that they, after their experience in India, something moved them to do something for India. And I congratulate my own students. They did good job. And thank you for uh, Nihon Kairali for coordinating this work with Yagle. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Father, for all this information. In fact, uh, we, we feel very, very proud for those students and their initiatives. And uh, we, we, it's the first time, frankly, hearing an NGO functioning inside the students. Because uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not aware. We probably it may be because of I've studied in colleges in India and all, and we we operate in very small, very very small scales. But this Meguko, they have committing for 12 years a kit, and operating from 1975 and transferring over to the the next students. So this is really a great job from Meguko. So uh, thank you for letting everyone know about these initiatives. And uh, Meguko is means self-reliance of children in Asia. And okay. so we focus on India and Philippines. Meguko is a word coined Meguminok, children of grace. Okay. That's what we, our sponsored children, we, we call Megumi is uh, grace, Ko is children, Meguko, they call it. So, so self-reliance of children in Asia. Yeah. Uh, uh, John Father, um, roughly how many stu students you have supported so far from the university? Do you have any kind of statistics? You mean in India or Philippines? Or? I mean, I mean, together, together is also. Uh, in the university or in India? 
I mean, in India, like uh, from uh, uh, grade one to twelfth, you are supporting, no? I yeah, it is for last. Uh, you know, it, we are planning now to celebrate the fiftieth year. So it okay. is. Uh, it's uh, for so I'm in the beginning. We used to, you know, now it is in each school about hundred students we select in each school. We have ten schools. Okay. So we take takes so they graduate. So we as they graduate, they put new students. So we nice. limit to about hundred students in one school. Okay. Okay. So Thanks I do that. not know the exact number we because in the beginning it was not like that. So similarly in the Philippines also we limit to thousand students, but we have good coordinators there. They operate. Okay. Thanks for that. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so now I I would like to invite uh, my Nakajima, who is from Meguko, Japan. Uh, to speak about their experiences in India and uh, what, what, how, how they triggered the actual, uh, how they got motivated to support India and the story, story of them. So, Megu, uh, please, Meguko, uh, my Nakajima-san, can you please share the experience? Hi. Yeah, hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm my Nakajima from Sofia University. Yeah. And I am as father john explained i am uh, the former member of meguko and i um, retired last year and i was there for three years and i went to india two years ago two years ago <laughs> yes and i also have two more students from um sofia university and for, they are also former former member of Memuko and I would like to explain my, my experience mm -hmm. during Meguko. and if I can I would like to share the screen yeah. so uh, we prepared a slide to explain okay. about yeah. us uh, uh, yeah uh, can you um, please? yeah please yeah I think you can share okay You're so I, I'm not the person the to share the screen can you Who? miwa miwa uh, miwa miwa, miwa uh -huh. yes. <laughs> thank yeah. you please uh, sri kusan can you please make yeah miwa san yeah please try now yeah thank you thank you oh yes i can <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry yeah. um Can you, yeah. can you see the slide? Yeah. yeah, we can see. Ah, okay. So I would like to start. So, so about us, Miwa. Okay, okay. So we are. As I explained, and we are the stu we are students from Sofia University and former former member of Meguko, and we established a crowdfunding for India this May. So we su we support. We, hmm? I will explain about the crowdfunding later. So now I would like to explain Meguko a little bit first. So next slide, please. So as Father John explained, we are the Meguko is the student organization, um, student organization created by Sophia University, the university students, and we are now supporting thousand students each in Philippines and India, and we also visit both countries. Like every, hmm. <laughs> every year, but yeah, yeah. So I went to the Philippines three years ago, and I went to India two years ago. And the uh, and Meguko established in nineteen seventy five, and we continue to support student education in both countries. And we have three principles when we do our activities, which is with our next slide, please. So one is a stand on an equal footing. 
and face-to-face -face support. And last one is reconsideration of our lifestyles. And now we support 10 facilities in India and six in the Philippines. So <laughs> about Megacode, Father John already explained a lot, lot of things. So I would like to ex explain my experience a little bit from now. And I went to India for, I went to India two years ago for about three weeks. And since our, our partner facilities are all in good, Gujarat. So I went to, I mainly went to Gujarat. And main thing I, I did was to visit the partner facilities and interview the with, with the fathers and sisters in that partner facilities. And also I went to a lot of schools that our that Megoko supports. And next slide, please. And we also visit a lot of villages that our support, our students we support when um, live, and we contact with with we we. <laughs> interact with students or joining mass or what and having like time with the local people in India and Gujarat. Yes. Next slide please. So this <laughs> these are the pictures that no, these are pictures when we interact with people, interact with students we support. And this, these are the experience I, these are what I experienced when I went to India two years ago. And next slide, please. So from this experience, um, when we heard the serious, serious situation in India, by the corona coronaviruses, so we what, what we decided to establish the we decided to do the crowdfunding called Support India Now in May. So we are the member of the crowdfunding. <laughs> so and we started this activity this summer and we collect the money about a month and actually we we actually 61 people supported our activity and we could collect 13 135 yen one hundred, one hundred thirty-five thousand yen, kana. Okay. <laughs> yes. So next slide, please. And we decided to um, share this money to Nihon Kairari, and this is why <laughs> we we are here. <laughs> No, this picture is when we met Ajay san <laughs> this summer, <laughs> and um, and introduce ourselves and share our share our money. So uh, <laughs> this is about like this is. Mm, our, our introduction and so this is our last slide but so our wishes uh, wishes are like our project is supported many by many supporters and we are happy to connect with connect their 
warm heart to India and we wish for the safe and secure life as many as as many people as possible and we are really happy to um, connect with Nihon Kairari and Eka Eka Love yeah <laughs> sorry for sorry it's, it's difficult to pronounce the name of the organization but so thank you for for the support and sorry for my English is really poor and it's difficult to make might difficult to understand but yep this is the end of our presentation thank you very much thanks a lot nakajima-san actually uh, we we it's not just behalf of nihon kairali we want to thank on behalf of all indian communities and everyone for for all india because you are just with, just because of your intention to support india with pure heart you without any any other triggers you collected money you feel like you have to do it something and you contacted us so this is very noble course which we are doing and all this education consistent education support and just one more thing uh, i i mean I, i i used to go in front of your university because i worked just behind your university and i used to see you guys sometimes staying outside near the stations with some banners and uh, some, some, sometimes sometimes some ban i don't know some uh, asking people for, who are passing over the street sometimes so th this is not not just a small thing which you are doing and kudos to you your all team and meguko and we are very proud and happy to associate with you and uh, thank you for the details about your experiences of india we wish uh, you can work more with in other indian projects and all, all the best for your future too so uh, now let me move uh, to uh, the ne next next uh, topic that's from dr devisha shashidevan she is a prof assistant professor at tata institute of social science and she was also uh, involved in many kind of support for migrants and many other activities in kerala and other part of uh, india also uh, so would like to invite her for giving an impact of idea about impact in kerala and the mitigation measures which are which are active now for uh, for the covid impact so over to you dr devisha sashidevan thank you thank you ajay uh, yeah. so um, so i i'll just introduce myself i'm uh, devisha i teach uh, in the department of social work uh, in tiss mumbai uh, michel and ajit are uh, you know uh, we have worked uh, very closely uh, quite good friends in fact uh, you know young uh, colleagues of mine and um, uh, the uh, how it has impacted i think many of us know in terms of how covid had unfolded michel was also speaking about the same um uh, how it all started uh, with respect to covid and uh, relief activities and transformative measures that uh, we were trying to uh, bring about was basically with the first lockdown you know what all happened and uh, the initiative started with the fact that i was watching television and there was a migrant link worker who speaks hindi um and uh, they, it was very difficult to disperse the uh, you know crowd the migrants were very agitated they were not able to go home information was not clear etc and i saw this uh, link worker coming trying to talk to uh, the migrants within 5 minutes everyone disperses every single person on road that happened in kottayam district in kerala everyone disperses so my first thought was you know one should speak to them in their language especially you know with respect to kerala and we have a lot of migrant population here so uh, contacted nhm we have uh, uh, with this we um, we work on a lot of field action projects and one of the field action projects that uh, my center was associating um, was with uh, nhm national health mission and on uh, and with delsa district legal services authority and we were working on uh, you know um, uh, greening the uh, ernakulam district cochin especially so connecting to that you know my colleagues over there i i contacted dr akhil he was one of the co-founders of uh, let's reach out kerala as well and we we decided that we'll you know we'll we'll start off with this project 
where uh, nothing could have been done without the 200 plus volunteers, including Ajit and Michel, who were you know part of the core team, uh, who helped us. As uh, uh, you know, uh, Professor John uh, mentioned, um, uh, it, I, I think sometimes as as teachers, as faculty, what you do is you have a thought, you initiate it, but without your students and without the support of volunteers and organizations and uh, you know, n number of stakeholders, it really doesn't move on. Even if you have money, it doesn't move on, right? So with let's reach out, let's reach out, Kerala. We have not really spent uh, you know any money. It was just the volunteerism that we have seen. Eklavya, you know, in many aspects, in many situations, helped us out. So one of the things that um, we saw was that you know we uh, when when I look back, we were able to transform you know a lot of structures and processes. So in terms of, you know, a letter to the High Court of, uh, you know, uh, Kerala, which was quoted and uh, which was written to Delsa, the District Legal Services Authority, but that letter was, you know, very instrumental along with many other, uh, you know, um, uh, proofs uh, to basically um, come, you know, Honorable High Court had asked, asked for um, a support, came out in support of migrant workers. And uh, the same way, you know, there was a lot of support from multiple stakeholders, you know, that had happened. So what, what, what I have seen is that, you know, practicing uh, social work or, uh, you know, initiatives of uh, care and solidarity, we have to also look into uh, alternative, you know, justice, uh, which acknowledges uh, individual experiences, identities, and, you know, how we can um, actively resist, uh, you know, injustice systems. So when we talk about uh, that, we, government is a huge part of, you know, these systems. And we were able to work uh, throughout Kerala, uh, West Bengal, uh, Odisha, Maharashtra, um, UP. Uh, you know, some of some 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 systems which might be really difficult compared to the others. We were able to work, uh, you know, with these systems uh, with the help of uh, civil servants, with the help of, you know, NGOs, with the help of individuals who just had that, as Ajay mentioned, pure heart to just, you know, take an initiative. Um, what's happening in Kerala right now is that the second wave had hit. Uh, it was really bad. But since the system was already in place, uh, migrant issues uh, were uh, much, much, much better handled than, you know, what... Uh, what the state, even the state was not prepared in the first half. Um, what we see is an inclusionary factor we are trying to create, uh, especially in healthcare, uh, in education and any other spaces for that matter. So uh, what, what we did was that, you know, we had something called the oxygen war room uh, for each district and we made sure that oxygen was available throughout, you know, different hospitals. So which ensures not just for the general public, even, you know, uh, to the uh, migrant population. Uh, there were spaces where, you know, uh, local public would, uh, lo local citizens would say that, you know, they wouldn't want migrant workers to stay because, you know, Corona is also, you know, tagged with uh, poverty and other aspects, which is again, socially constructed. Uh, these were, uh, uh, so, so in certain situations, you know, um, more uh, facilities were provided. Uh, maybe a different facility was provided, but actively what I can see uh, with the uh, initiative here is that integrating migrant population to the system, to, to the general, you know, system that is run. So issues were handled, uh, you know, there, there are uh, uh, telecommunication doctors, you know, that worked round the clock uh, for the, the general population as well as for migrant population. Volunteers, again, connecting uh, through uh, Let's Reach Out Kerala or even other projects um, who can speak to migrant workers in case, you know, they are having some serious uh, health issues connected to COVID or otherwise there were pregnancy cases, you know, later on in the second wave, et cetera, which we were able to uh, sort of sort out. Another very interesting thing that's happening right now, which we are trying to do is that just before a uh, second wave hit, uh, so volunteers were there till say, say around June, July, and some of uh, the core team members are still working. But uh, what we then did was that, you know, uh, some of the students were working in the center of mental health or public health, or even my center, which is uh, livelihoods and social innovation. Uh, they started working with uh, the system. They started working. They, they were here in NHM with IMA, uh, International uh, Indian Medical Association, uh, and they were working hands on. So what we are trying to do is decentralize the system that we have done. So we, I'm happy to say that there's something that has started in uh, collectorate in Ernakulam where there is a telecom, uh, you know, a facility, telemedicines, te you know, um, um, any, any any issues that migrants are facing, they would be calling to, you know, particular numbers. 
so that's with the help of um, you know police with the help of uh, labor department etc so some sort of decentralization is happening and even within the panchayat system with the students etc that comes from this or other um, amrita hospital etc are also sending students public health students mental health students uh, what we do is that we try to integrate you know the system of um, um, migrant link workers and to the larger system that is working uh, that's what is happening in kerala uh, so there's a lot of uh, hope and there's a lot of um, lot of ways in which you know it can grow and improvise and you know uh, change um in other parts of the uh, you know country where we are working there are issues there are a lot of complexities when it comes to class caste gender um uh, region religion uh, what not uh, we are trying to sort of sort out and uh, some of the students are working uh, currently they had gone for uh, field work and to multiple places in uh, the country uh, from environmental issues to uh, you know social justice issues it's all inter uh, linked uh but yeah we we work towards that and i think uh, ultimately when i when i look at it is um what what i see is you know we um look at uh, we we see an approach which is more um more so which is looking at alternative you know justice which uh, transform you know structures transform processes which will reshape uh, power relations and inequalities and uh, issues of othering and exclusion so um, these are things that are current uh, that has been there for decades and it is going to continue for uh, god knows uh, what you know how long but uh, we are working towards that and i'm just so happy that uh, very young uh, people like michelle and uh, ajit are so committed uh, and, and not just them there are so many volunteers i you know I, i if i start naming them it would be a long list um uh, it's just amazing to see uh, you know how they have worked and even the initiative from uh, uh, from japan uh, it's just amazing and encouraging to see uh, such collaborations and such initiatives from uh, individuals and um, yeah that that's uh, i think that's that's what i wanted to share thank you thank you ajay thank you dr devisha actually uh, as as dr john said just being in the behind and leading all these initiatives and at least giving motivation to many such volunteers itself will help to decentralize in a in a bigger aspect because the more more volunteers are there it's more easy to decentralize who 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 just work without any other intention i mean just with pure heart so mm-hmm. i think uh, thank you for giving all these insights about uh, Uh, the social work activities in uh, uh, kerala and all over india so i think uh, the, let this this symposium be a start uh, to think about more international collaborations into this and i think uh, while even exchanging with the students the ideas everything the, the, let this be a good start and uh, saying that let me move on to the next one uh, from ajit uh, he want to say about a government systems because he is working for uh, rural development in government of odisha and involved in many of such activities so we would like to uh, know about how a government framework uh, is functioning in in such aspect so I, uh, over to you ajit i hope i am audible yeah you are audible okay okay uh, first of all like very thank you to uh, nihon kairali and i appreciate the a uh, great work uh, that meduko and uh, uh, egalavia has been doing all through the years uh, and uh, already michel and professor devisha ma'am uh, gave us an idea about uh, what all are the impacts of covid which has been happening throughout our country and especially in the state of kerala so uh, being giving a brief introduction i work for government of odisha as a development professional and uh, i work in one of the most poorest districts of india which has been like affected uh, so as as you can understand that like rightly as devisha ma'am pointed out pointed it out like the covid and its impacts has been like uh, they have different structures to it so if you are coming from a particular class or like particular gender or from a particular caste the impact of covid is much higher than if you are a privileged ind- individual so if you see the district as a whole the uh, corona and its impact and the lockdown has been pretty sudden and uh, even the government structures even the government structures i was working for was not ready to take such a challenge so what we can see is that uh, the government 
most of the uh, policies and programs of the government they are um, done through the uh, three tier panchayati raj systems and all because the uh, it is a more in most of the cases there is a top down approach which has been like uh, adopted by the government so the policies and the programs are designed from the uh, state level or from the district level and uh, the block level uh, panchayats and the gram panchayats they take up those programs and they implement uh, it uh, in all the areas which which comes under that so what we could see is that uh, there were a lot of lacunas which is uh, many of the field realities were different because uh, and and all these uh, steps were done in an emergency situation which also made us difficult to like make in uh, many kind of adjustments but uh, the government they were trying to uh, give monetary support and also like a medical insurance kind of things but uh, and also solid ration then there were uh, pension schemes and like the amount of pensions was like uh, distributed priorly even though like all these steps were taken uh, taken by the government but due to the sheer size of the country we are in and uh, due to the inaccessibility which is uh, experienced by the population in general like last month last mile connectivity was missing in many of the cases and uh, in when such cases was appearing uh, that's when this uh, social solidarity uh, by this local organizations ngos and international communities came into effect because uh, this last mile connectivity like if i want something to be done like maybe i i have to like contact the district authorities first then they have to go through this file then that file then uh, it, it it might take a lot of time but uh, this international communities and local ngos they were very quick to react to the problems which was happening in the field level and uh, they were act very actively supporting this cause which government also like couldn't achieve so um, this is uh, due to the time constraints this is what i would like to point out like i really appreciate the work nihon kairi really has been doing all through these years and uh, i thank like nihon kairi really to give me such an awesome experience about this thank you yeah uh, so thank you ajit it, it was uh, really good to know about the government frameworks and uh, as a social worker in a professional de development professional level what all things you are doing what all challenges you are facing and how such ngos npos can impact help help you are help the government systems so thank you ajit so uh, that's all about we 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 are a little bit late but it was a great insight to many people to know about all these things uh, so uh, before uh, thank you all and before saying that what of thanks i would like to ask uh, all audience if they have some questions to ask in, to any of any of them or to interchange interact between the participants please this is an open session for uh, so if you have some question please raise your hand if you want to talk with anyone please raise your hand yeah uh, i think yeah uh, yeah so this uh, um, this babu here so this a uh, a question to professor devisha uh, you know it's 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 really wonderful you know to hear about all this and uh, my question is you know how do we how do we i mean what, what is that you know the next steps and you know how as an international community uh, what what do you recommend you know us to look at as areas potentially we could we could all, all be a, you know helping hand into the initiatives i mean i'm, I'm sure there are many area areas but uh, Uh, from from whatever uh, you have been focusing on you know if there are one or two you know areas which you feel as you know the most needy i mean that will be helpful for us to also to, you know to potentially look at you know what we could be what we could be doing uh, thank you thank you for the question um, see what i what i'm seeing right now is um, the loss of livelihoods is uh, extreme um, mm. to a level where we can't even fathom uh, so um 
uh, unpaid work that is happening. Um, uh, climate is another issue that has been affecting uh, climate change is another issue that has been affecting Kerala for the last three years or so. We can debate whether it is truly a climate change, whether it is uh, whose fault, all that, but it's, you know, it's seen throughout the country. Look at Uttarakhand floods, look at uh, Maharashtra, you know, the floods that's happening, Bihar, Odisha, Kerala. So because of that, a lot of population where, uh, um, who used to be connected to a lot of natural resources are getting more affected. Mm. And when we talk about initiatives, uh, livelihood initiatives, state is having a lot of livelihood missions. Uh, it has uh, um, MG Narega schemes where, you know, 100 days of work is ensured, etc. But it is not contextualized. Mm -hmm. We are not working from a people-centric perspective. So when we, uh, when we, when we look at that, like I, I myself have students who's, uh, who has lost uh, their parents or, you know, um, they themselves are uh, street vendors. I have a student in my class. Who, who's a street vendor in, you know, Dharavi, uh, no, in Pane, uh, one of the slum areas. And what he's, uh, and people like him are saying is that, you know, they don't have access to livelihood. So, you know, so uh, creating, uh, strengthening structures that would help, you know, livelihoods to, to thrive. You may not see the result tomorrow or day after tomorrow, but that's a constant process that one needs to focus upon and sustainable livelihoods. Mm. Not something, you know, you go to a tribal belt and you say that, you know, let's teach them, say, um, beautician, you know, course. There are, there are programs like that, which may not work. That means you're, you're, you're expecting them to migrate to another place, another town or near, near, nearby areas. You're not working with their own culture, their own systems. Uh, you can provide them with aspirations, but you don't dictate it. You know, the people have to uh, be involved in the process. I think there are some certain brilliant organizations who work on the same. And when you talk about livelihood, health is connected. So you work with rag picking community. Health is very much important. They don't have access to, uh, you know, public health. The timing mm -hmm. might be different. They don't have medicines. There are women with anemia, uh, again, migrant workers uh, who had returned back from Kerala to Jharkhand. They are constantly in touch. I think, you know, Michelle and uh, Ajit will also know that they don't have money. Some of them lose their life. Maybe it is post-COVID syndrome, post-COVID effects. Uh, I might call the secretary uh, of, you know, state. I might know some IS officer. They might, you know, try to drizzle it down, but the system is still shaky. So they lose access to livelihoods. They don't have 10 days of work. And then they don't have money. They don't have access to healthcare as well. So it's a vicious circle. So I think it's very important that we work with the people and, you know, on sustainable livelihoods, because if you have sustainable livelihoods, you have access to a lot of, a uh, lot of opportunities in terms of mental health, public health, um, in terms of education, and, you know, it, it should be a very holistic approach. So small projects where maybe even uh, Sophia University, maybe this or, uh, uh, you know, any other programs or even universities can come together and look at not just writing papers, but also work on field initiatives, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and maybe funding for uh, for working on maybe six months or a one year project, which can uh, which can then help work with community, a particular community that we can adopt, and you know over the years maybe see the sort of change that can happen. So yeah, it's a long term thing that I would think about. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Understand. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there any other one who want to speak up with someone? Uh, yeah, uh, Ajay, Sham here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is a question to Michelle. Michelle, you were mentioned. Thank you. First of all, uh, my sincere, uh, sincere, sincere appreciation to all of you for this uh, excellent work, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that you are carrying out all through these years and wish you all the best going forward as well. My question is, uh, or my, uh, you know, I just want to have some more insights. This is uh, regarding, you were, you were mentioning about uh, uh, the, about the well-being and I think Dr. Uh, Devisha also mentioned about the mental health uh, side of things. So our post-COVID, you know, like uh, as you said, we, there are many people who have lost their, uh, you know, the near, near and dear ones and even the breadwinners in the family. So I think there's a lot of, of course, there are a lot of initiatives to support them, you know, from a financial side, especially 
uh, just want to know the insights about the, the mental side of it like how are uh, people coming out of this uh, situation and i think it is it will take some time uh, for them to come out of this and they will need all kinds of support so just want to understand uh, uh, what is your uh, you know uh, based on you are working on the ground level uh, what is your insights on that and then what way we can and um, i mean we'll be able to support uh, as a team uh, going forward if you could throw some insights on that that'll be of uh, great uh, information thank you now uh, hi sham thank you for the question uh, yeah that's a very a huge consideration um about mental health um like drawing from my experience uh, working for the migrant i have limitations as to how much i can disclose because of um, data collection uh, privacy conditions um you know because it's an ongoing process and we have still haven't published our findings but um up, so from whatever i can speak um the general observation is about how people like how they understand mental health that is a very important aspect um when we talk about mental health we know what it is and um, you know what are the things that we have to take care and what are the support that we can receive but here we are talking like especially when we talk about migrants internal migrants to kerala uh, like people who are from other states in india who are coming to kerala um like they are not you know mental health many a time doesn't occur to them like it does it, it doesn't uh, it's not a uh, area of concern for them because like um, the other day i was talking to one person like in an informal conversation is like like what is what is it to worry we work from you know hand to mouth and that is it so um to understand the problem so like we have taken the like we have disseminated the aspect of well being and mental health we have brought teams like various teams like laws damage um and um immobility and um, you know health physical health access to health and um support like so we have to derive these themes uh, based on their like based on previous studies that have been conducted with the migrants we formulated these themes which you know are aspects of mental health so if we directly ask them how are you feeling um, how do you you know how is like do you feel any stress tension they may not be able to answer us because you know they haven't come across it or they haven't given a thought until then so breaking it down uh, in ways that they perceive it they understand it uh, is very important i think that was one of the challenging part um, of our job so uh, when we go go to see them and ask them so how are you feeling how is your you know physical and mental health they say ha sab acha hai sab acha hai like everything is fine in hindi uh, so we have to break it down i think that effort has to happen from our part to uh, conceptualize you know the way they conceptualize it and um, when we were working with lr okay let's reach out to ella we did have a psychologist working with us so there were certain um, cases uh, certain migrant workers issues that we needed you know we had we had to take professional help so we had a um, few psychologists working with us and we used to direct the call to them and they used to talk and you know um, um look into that that is of migrant internal in migrants or when we talk about uh, out migration like few people uh, again the problem is about uh, they do have a lot of thing but you know this male you know male uh, mm-hmm. are not supposed to show their uh, worry or tension or uh, the burden that patriarchy has put on them like you know how you know men don't share things and men should feel okay so that comes on to them a lot and when we approach them is that is when they start talking about it so i think we have to create those spaces within our domestic uh, sphere like within our houses within our areas there will be a lot of people affected you know due to it but nobody speaks about how it has apart from you know how it has affected their um, you know living conditions or like you know um, sudden stop of income or reduce of income that is there but you know how they actually feel so um, when we go do our interviews when we are out in the field doing our data collection a lot of times many times uh, these men have told us thank you for coming because we haven't thought about all these and we never had a space to talk about it so far in our life even even when they are living with other people who have similar issues so uh, i think it has a lot to do with the social setting in india how you know mental health is not always brought to the forefront 
and that is a huge um i think a positive something that you know we can take as positive because of covid how a lot of uh, discourse like academically and also in day to day life um mental health important like how mental health is gaining importance so thank you we have to like yeah. in from what i have understood is we have to conceptualize it the way they understand it not from how mm-hmm. we understand it so mental health mm-hmm. like as an academician the way i conceptualize mental health would be you know so many people's theory but how do they understand it so that the reverse thinking is what gains a lot of importance mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now yeah i hope you i answered yeah. your question yeah thank you michelle thank thank you for your insights yeah thank thank you thanks ajay yeah uh so thank you all i hope uh, i mean i would next i would i think uh, e- further discussions because this, this all i mean we nihon kerli also want to involve uh, in such activities and with meguko knowing about these things ekalavya all these daily gates so i think uh, we can work more on this so for such sessions we can we can uh, obviously this is the first time but if there any other topic to discuss or anything to done we can plan it later so now i would like to invite uh, vinita rajiv to say vote of thanks sorry we are lo- running little bit late but uh, uh, may, may i invite vinita rajiv uh, hello yeah yeah can you hear me yeah Is, yeah uh, okay so hello myself vinita i am representing nihon kerli uh, from its committee so first of all i would like to uh, thank our uh, dr john joseph I, i mean we are not used to calling him that is he is like our beloved jonathan so you know for taking um, the nk charity event to sofia university and helping us create a new pathway of funding so thank you so much jonathan uh, next our uh, yukimoto san and um, my nakajima san from mekgo japan um i'm really thankful for the initiative that you are taking uh the uh, you are doing like a the your initiative is okay it's creating fund for but more than that i believe uh, it's creating a value among the students of you know helping each other and uh, you know creating empathy in the kids i think that is more valuable uh so thank you so much uh then i would uh, like to thank michelle alis from un university and devisha shashdevan and uh, ajit pidambaran from government of odisha for contributing to this program and you know giving your valuable insights for um, the uh, all, all the work that you are doing to the community and uh, hope we can learn something from your uh, experience thank you so much again uh, um from ekalavya uh, i am really um, um touched by the work that you are doing and thank you so much uh, raju kendri and prashant chavan from ekalavya for uh, uh, your presence in this your work is um, uh, is immense like i i cannot say like uh, being a teacher myself i feel that uh, and uh, education is the best charity and i truly believe in that so i'm sure that uh, eglava will produce many leaders for tomorrow not only in india but worldwide and then i cannot finish off this without thanking all the members of nk for their uh, immense contribution uh, i'm not talking just fund wise but there are many many Uh, ways they have supported you know real uh, you know choosing the right uh, cases for the support to india uh, there, there are many cases where we supported patients so medical ex- medical and then you know giving um, equipments so you know uh, identifying the right person so the lot of effort and time everything is involved so i would really like to thank each one of you uh next i would like to thank our uh, president babu san who with the community members have always driven the charity work for nk thank you so much babu san and uh, i think finally um ajay uh, no words to say 
thank you so much for um, all your co coordination in this it was wonderful being a part of this program thank you so much ajay uh, i think um, i would like to thank each and everyone for uh, joining this once again thank you Ajay, are we winding up or? Yeah, let's wind up. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you for the next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.